Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is Physics Chapter 9, Current Electricity, Video 1. Today's topic is electric current. Objectives are know the uh, anatomy of a light bulb, know the definition of a circuit and its requirement, know the definition and equation for electrical current, and know the conventional current direction. Understand when given a path naturally, Charged objects flow from areas of high electric potential to areas of low electric potential. Understand the difference between current and the drift speed. Understand that only energy can be used up. Charge can never be used up. Be able to determine the rate of current, number of charges, <coughs> or time in a system in which charge is flowing from one point to another. Be able to convert from charge in coulombs to elementary charge to determine the number of electrons flowing through a system. A light bulb anatomy. So a light bulb is a device consisting of a filament, as you, you see in the diagram here, attached to two wires. The wires and the filament are conducting materials which allow charges to flow through them. One wire is connected to the ribbed side right over here, and the other connect to the base or the bottom. The ribbed edge and the bottom base are separated by insulating material, which prevents the direct flow of charge between the bottom base and the ribbed edge. So the only pathway by which a char charge can make it from the ribbed edge to the bottom base or vice versa is the pathway which includes the wires and the filament. So the current can come from here and goes out at a base or from the base goes out at the side. So basically, how can we make this work? You'll have to put a battery here. That's a source. So one end of the source touches one end of the battery. The side has to touch the other end of the battery. What is an electric, uh, electric circuit? A circuit is simply a closed loop through which charge can continuously move. So the two requirements are there must be a closed conducting loop in external circuit, which stretches from the high potential positive terminal to the low potential negative terminal. So it has to be closed, as you can see, and go through the filament here coming through the side over here and conducting back to the battery. So the loop is closed, it has to be conducting. If you put insulating wires, if you put a plastic here, or even you put a paper here, the light bulb is not going to light up. Next one, there has to be an energy source, a supply capable of doing work on charge to move it from low energy level to a high energy level. So we know in the last slide, we talked about or in the objective, the energy is very much like, uh, um, you know, the object naturally falls from high point to low point. Same thing, charge goes from high voltage and goes naturally to low voltage. So charge, you know, running along here naturally, going back. When it goes back from low to high, you need some source to push it. And so some kind of energy provider to push it. So battery is such an energy supply. So electric current, electric current, if the two requirements of electric circuit are met, then charge will flow through the external circuit. This flow of charge is called current, or the rate in which charge flows past a point on a circuit. So how many charges going like in one second pass through that point? So current is a rate quantity like velocity, the rate at which an object changes its position. Acceleration is a rate at which an object changes velocity or power at rate which work is done on an object. So current is another rate quantity. Is how much charge, how many charges going through one point at one time. So in every case of the rate quantity, the mathematical equation involves some quantity over time. So the quantity is rate of a charge, so charge over time. 
chart, the unit of charge is coulombs. Coulombs over time, we have a name for it called ampere. It requires potential difference. That's the the circuits. Potential difference is provided by the battery or the source of energy. Next one is path for flow. So it has to be a circuits. You have to have a circuits to have current. I equals delta Q over T. In this case, delta Q is the amount of charge flowed through one point during a certain amount of time. Let's take a look at this example. During a thunderstorm, a lightning strike transfers 15 coulombs of charge in 10 million seconds. What was the electrical current produced in this strike? Well, current equals to charge over time. Charge is 15 coulombs. Time is 10 million milliseconds. We have to change that into second. A milli is 10 to the negative 3. So plug everything in. You have 1500 amps. That's why... Thunder, the lightning strike is so dangerous. The current is huge. Another example. If the charge flowing at a rate of 2.5 times 10 to the 16 elementary charge per second. Remember, we have to change elementary charge to coulombs. What is the electric current? So to change elementary charge in coulombs, we know this is how many elementary charge. So you'll have to multiply by one. We know one elementary charge is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. The elementary charge, elementary charge cancels. So you will have four times 10 to the negative three coulombs. T is per second means T is one second. So I is just four, a point zero times 10 to the negative three amperes or four milliamperes. Conventional current direction. The direction of electric current is by convention the direction in which a positive charge would move from positive to negative. So outside of, cur outside of the external circuit, okay, positive charge naturally repels by the positive side. So comes through, did all the work, and then go back. When it go back, it cannot go positive and negative attract. <clears throat> it cannot go to the positive side. That's why the battery has to do work. When battery do work, it changes its energy to electrical energy. So electric circuit in the external so electric current in the external circuit is directed from the positive to the negative terminal. Current is not drift speed. This can be confusing because current is a rate quantity. The rate quantity is not how fast it goes, but how many numbers of charges goes. Current has to do with the number of coulombs of charge that pass a point in the circuit per unit of time. Drifting speed refers to average distance traveled by the charge carrier per unit of time. So two are different. Even though the drift speed <coughs> is actually very, very slow, this is a typical path of an electron because the electron has a lot of obstacles when it goes through wire. So it comes, it bounces back, collide with something, then goes forward, then bounces back, goes forward. It's very, very slow. But current can be really, really big because there are a lot of charges doing the same thing. So high current results from many charges carrying carriers passing through a given cross section of a wire on the circuit. So even though the drift speed is extremely slow, the current could be big. This is because there are many, many charge carriers moving at once throughout the whole length of the circuit. Nature of charge flow. So we know the average drift speed of an electron is very, very slow. Then why does light in a room or in a flashlight immediately after the switch is turned on? <coughs> why is that? Because charge carriers and wire <coughs> of electric circuits are electrons. They're already there, supplied by the atoms of the wire. So when a switch turned on, there is electric potential difference established across the two ends of the external circuit. So the electron began moving along a zigzag path in their usual direction. Thus, the flipping of the switch caused an immediate response throughout every part of the circuit, setting the charge carriers everywhere in motion in the same net direction. So because the charge is already there, think about all little people already line up. 
So once you just give it a command, say march, then every every person in that line start to march. Right? When they march, they start to do work. That's why the light comes on right away. While the actual motion of a charge carrier occurs with slow speed, the signal that informs them to start moving travels at a fraction of the speed of light. So it's very fast. Again, only energy can be used up. Charge can never be used up. So there's a misconception. So when a battery is not working because charge is used up, that's not true. That's because the battery doesn't have energy to push the charge anymore. So charge carrier never become consumed or used up. That's because the atoms cannot be consumed or used up. While the energy possessed by the charge may be used up, the charge carrier themselves do not disintegrate, disappear, or otherwise become removed from the circuit. And there is no place in a circuit where the charge carrier begins to pile up or accumulate. The rate at which charge enters the external circuit at one end is the same as the rate at which charge exit the external circuit on the other end. So what comes in is what goes out. They are the same. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.